Today's lesson is all about algebraic expressions and how we can convert between verbal and algebraic terms. When you substitute a number for each variable in an expression and then simplify using the order of operations, that's what we call evaluating. So you evaluate when you substitute numbers for variables. When a number or a variable or the product of a number and one or more variables occurs, we call those a term. So multiplication, product, multiplication, holds terms together. Addition and subtraction separate terms from each other. A coefficient is the numerical factor of a term. And the quantity whose value doesn't change, that would be a constant term. And usually we call the constant the term without a variable. And then we have like terms when we have the same variable raised to the same power. So the question arises, can you write an algebraic expression that has two terms and one negative variable coefficient. So I'll pause for a minute for you to write one, and then I'll write one. So there is an algebraic expression with two terms and one negative variable coefficient. So one term is 5x squared, this is one term, and another term is negative 3x, and my negative coefficient is negative 3. In example 1, we want to write an algebraic expression for each verbal phrase. The difference of 7 and 4 means 7 minus 4. The product of 3 and x is when we multiply 3 times a number x. The number y increased by 2 increased means addition, so I'm adding 2 to the number y. The quotient of 48 and 3 means 48 divided by 3, or you could write it horizontally, 48 divided by 3. We have the number n, we're going to double that, and then decrease by 1. So double the number n, decreased by 1. Now, letter F is a little tricky. 5 less than W doesn't mean 5 minus W. It means W, the number, and we want 5 less than that. So be on the lookout for that type of wording. Letter G, 2 times the sum of A and B. So I want 2 times the sum of A and B. Letter H, the inverse of a number, well, the inverse of a number is the opposite of the number, increased by its absolute value. Letter I, the absolute value of the difference of two numbers. I'm going to call my numbers A and B, so the absolute value of the difference of the two numbers. And then finally, letter J, the inverse of the absolute value of twice a number. So the inverse is the opposite of the absolute value of twice a number, so that would be two times a number. Take the absolute value and do the opposite or the inverse. So in example two, we have the algebraic expression and we're gonna convert that to a verbal expression. So in the first example, 5n minus one, we could say that that's one less than five times a number.
For letter B, we have two times a number plus three. So we could say that is three more than twice a number. Three more than twice a number. And if you want to call it the number N, you can do that as well. So same thing with the first one. One less than five times a number, and my number is N. In part C, it looks like we have X plus 7, so that quantity, and we're dividing by 2. So I could say that this is half the sum, half the sum of a number and 7. And if I wanted to say a number X and 7, I could do it that way. So here we're going to add x and 8 together and get that answer and multiply by 3. We could say that this is 3 times the sum, 3 times, and when I say the sum, that's where the parentheses begin. So we're adding a number and 8. And by adding that, the result is the sum, and we're going to take that result and multiply by 3. On part E, if we have a negative in front of a 6, and then the power 2, we do the exponents first. So we're going to say this is negative 1 times 6 times 6, or we can say it's the opposite of 6 squared. This is the opposite of the number 6 squared. So our answer in this case would be negative 36. But in letter F, the negative is in front of the 6, and that's grouped together with parentheses. So this is actually the number negative 6. So I'm going to take the negative 6 number and square that, and the result would be positive 36. So this one would give us a negative 36 since it's the opposite of 6 squared. But letter F is negative 6 times negative 6. That's going to give us positive 36. For example, D, let, we're going to model each situation with an expression. So let's say you had $150, but you're spending $2 every day. If you're spending $2 every day, and we let D stand for the number of days, then you start out with $150, but you're reducing that amount by $2 each and every day. In part B, you start with $15 and you save $8 every week. So we're gonna use the letter W to represent the number of weeks that you've been saving. You started with $15 and every week you put $8 in for each week. So it's 8 times the number of weeks and $15 to begin with. On part C, if you receive your regular salary plus a 5% bonus for of your regular pay, let's let the letter S represent your salary. So how are you getting paid algebraically? You get your regular salary plus you get 5%, and 5% is 5 divided by 100. So that's decimal 0, 05, and it's 5% of your regular salary, which is S. And finally, in Part D, your cell phone plan allows you 750 text messages, and you text 25 messages every day. So if we let the letter D stand for the number of days that you're sending a text message, and you text 25 messages every single day, but you're allowed 750, then you're going to subtract the 25 messages every day from your allowed amount. In example four, we're going to evaluate each expression. And we have B squared, so B is 5. We're squaring that minus 4 times A times C, which gives you 25 minus 4, and I'm going to do the negative 2 times the 3, and then 25 and minus 4 
times negative 6 is negative 24. So minus a negative 24 would be adding 24, and we have 49. In part B, we have x, and x is 3, so we're squaring 3, and our y value is negative 4. 3 minus 9 times negative 4. So 9 times negative 4 is negative 36, and 36 plus 3 is 39. And then finally in part C, we have 2 times x squared. That's going to be 36 minus negative 3 quantity squared, and we're dividing by 3. So this is 2 times the quantity, 36, minus 9, so that's going to be 27. And if this part is 27, 3 divides 27 9 times, and 2 times 9 gives us 18. Moving on to example 5, we want to simplify each expression, and if it's possible, but if it's not possible, we're going to write that it's already in simplest form. And looking at part A, we can combine 8m and 11m. They're both positive, so we're adding 8 plus 11, that's 19m. And then 7 minus 13 is going to give us negative 6. So 19m minus 6 would be our simplified form. And 12y squared and 5x squared, those are not like terms. So this one is already in simplest form. It cannot be combined because the variables are different. You can't add an x squared to a y squared. In part C, it looks like we need to use distributive property. 7 times 3m is 21m, and 7 times negative 4 is negative 28. Combining 21m and negative 16m is 5m, so we end up with 5m minus 28. And finally, in part D, you have 5 times 4x squared and 5 times negative 2, and we're subtracting 16 and adding 8x squared. So our like terms are 20x squared plus 8x squared. We have 28x squared. And negative 10 minus 16 is negative 26. So we've factored, we've distributed and collected like terms. We are not going to factor anymore. In part 6, just to make sure we understand that vocabulary, the terms, recall the terms, are held together by multiplication, and they're separated by addition and subtraction. In this first one, our terms are 2x squared, negative 3x, and 5. Can you do the terms for part B? And then in part A, our coefficients are the numbers in front of the variables, 2 and negative 3. And I'm also going to call 5 a coefficient if I thought about it as x to the 0 power. It could be considered a coefficient. You might want to ask your teacher if they approve of that. If not, we could call the coefficients 2 and negative 3 and the constant term 5. So in part B, if you're able to do that one by yourself, your terms are held together by multiplication. Your coefficients are the constant numbers that don't change. And the constant is just the number without the variable or the variable to the zero power. In example seven, you want to write an expression that will model the freshman class will sell pinwheels for peace as a fundraiser. 
what would be the total income after buying materials from Office Supply Company? That was a flat fee of $86, so this is our expense. And then they sell the pinwheels for $2 a piece. So if we allowed the letter P to stand for the number of pinwheels that are sold, and we want to know how much they make, then the total would be $2 for every pinwheel sold, but they have to subtract the $86 to get the materials to make the pinwheels for the donation. And finally, we're just going to summarize all of the properties for simplifying algebraic expressions, and we're going to use the letters A, B, and C. The definition of subtraction, A minus B, can also be looked at as A plus the opposite of B. The definition of division, A divided by B, can be written horizontally, vertically, and it could also be written as a multiplication problem when I separate the denominator as long as the B value is not zero. Distributive property over subtraction would appear as A times the quantity B minus C, and you could write that backwards as B minus C times A. In either case, we would have AB minus AC. Multiplication by zero, zero times A, or a times zero, no matter which order, will produce zero. Multiplication by negative one can be negative one times A, which we would say the opposite of A, or A times negative one. In either case, we would get the opposite of A. The opposite of a sum would look like two numbers added together, A and B, and we'd take the opposite answer. So that distributed could look like negative A plus negative B, or the opposite of A plus the opposite of B. Then the opposite of a difference would be similar. We would have negative one times A and negative one times negative B, so that would be addition for the B, and you could rewrite that as B minus A. The opposite of a product is going to be either negative 1 times A and the B separate, or A times negative 1 times B. In either case, the negative is only used one time. Don't think about that as distributing a negative one to both terms. And then the opposite of an opposite is going to give us a positive value. The opposite of an opposite. And this is the end of lesson two.